rich bottomlands between the Knife and Missouri rivers provided Hidatsa villagers with fertile soils to produce extensive garden fields. Generations of experience bestowed them with the knowledge of the best planting practices, seed selections, and harvesting techniques. First, the area had to be prepared. Trees were cut down and a fire was set to clear all the vegetation. After working the soil, fields were planted the following spring. To work the soil, proper tools were required. One was called a digging stick. There is no exact modern equivalent, but has similar uses to a hand trowel. This stick was light and used for digging up weeds. Another tool was the rake. Unlike today's rakes, the head was made from deer antlers or wood. Deer antler rakes were preferred because worms were afraid of the horns. Lastly, a bison shoulder blade or scapula was used to create a gardening hoe. Cottonwood or another light wood was made into a handle. It was very similar to a modern gardening hoe. With the soil prepared, it was time to plant the seeds. First were the sunflowers. They were often used as a border between each family's plot. When harvested, the cut flower heads were dried and the seeds extracted. These seeds were usually ground into a coarse meal with a little buffalo grease. It was high energy trail food. Corn was the most widely planted and at one time, there was as many as 13 varieties found in a range of colors. The first harvest in mid to late August was a time of celebration known as the Green Corn Ceremony. Think of as much corn on the cob as you can eat. Like corn, squash came in many varieties, but it was harvested throughout the summer. Flowers were eaten as well. Ripe squash was cut into thin slices, then pierced with a long stick. Dried pieces could then be rehydrated for winter food. Beans were grown with the corn to provide some shade and a support to climb. White, red, black, yellow, and spotted beans were all grown, but the use was the same, mostly dried for future use. Tribes from every direction would make their way to the Hidatsas and neighboring Mandans for their corn, beans, squash, and sunflowers. You can find many of these same varieties today and try growing them in your own garden.